Good morning, hockey fans. Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring away Jaeger Bombs DFS NHL shots of the night for Monday, December 23rd. That's right. Two more sleeps till Santa comes, puts the presents under the tree. Before that, we've got some DFS to get to. I'm also, as you can see, decked out in Minnesota Vikings gear. It's Monday night football, biggest game of the season. Going to beat those Packers, get into that division, uh, get a better seed in the NFC. On to the NHL. We've got a huge slate tonight. A um, couple games that are, do stand out. We've got three totals of six and a half. Looking at the Vegas odds, we've got Calgary at Minnesota. We've got Florida at Tampa Bay. And we've got Buffalo at Ottawa. We've got two games that have a five and a half total. Columbus at the New York Islanders. And then we've got St. Louis going into L.A. there as well. Um, we've got battle of, in terms of Washington and Boston game, we've got two top ten offenses facing two top ten defenses. So that's going to be um, a pretty exciting game there to watch. Probably one of the games of the night uh, in terms of the Eastern Conference anyway. And then we've got the Florida Panthers at Tampa Bay. It's a battle of top five offenses versus uh, bottom ten defenses. So there could be a ton of scoring in that game as well. With that, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to look at some of my core plays at each position for tonight. If you want a copy of the cheat sheet, definitely get into the Rotor Pros chat room. Get the copy of that cheat sheet. It's got all my core plays for cash games, GPPs, value plays out there, top goalies, top stacks, uh, news. We update our top targets tab. Um, so that's rankings at each position, top five players at each position with salary involved in that. That's posted about one to two hours before lineup lock. And then, of course, our skeleton lineups looking at our core plays um, and how we put them together come out about a half an hour to 45 minutes before lock as well. So let's just jump right in. Look at some goalies here for tonight. Uh, the first one I'm looking at is Carter Hart. Uh, also a Flyers fan and a homer here, but what stands out here tonight, the Flyers have been absolutely dominant at home. They've been merely average on the road this season. They are at home tonight. They're minus 181 favorites against the New York Rangers. Also checking the box on the, on the list, the Rangers are playing on a back-to-back -back and third game in four nights here as well. So Hart is definitely my top guy. The only concern we have with Carter Hart anytime we're rostering him in DFS is the Flyers, especially at home, don't give up a lot of shots. As you can see, he's only facing 26.6 .6 shots per 60 on the season. So that's a bit of a concern. This is why I like him a little bit better for cash games. Um, he's got that win upside, that win equity there for him tonight on home ice. So I think he should be able to get that win no matter what. If he only faces 25 shots, I think we can get away with that. Um, if you want to take a little bit more risk, Connor Hellebuck is definitely in play here. He is also at home. Tonight, he's facing Montreal. Montreal does have a top 10 offense, so there's a little bit more risk there. But what I like in, in terms of floor and upside here is the shots that he faces. So Hellebuck's facing about 33.2 shots per 60 on the season. Uh, Montreal's averaging, I think, right around 34.2, 34.3 shots per game. So he should be able to face a lot of shots tonight. Might be able to get you that 35 save bonus on DraftKings. Like I said, there's a little bit more risk to the line. Has dropped since open. It opened at Winnipeg minus about, it was like 142, 143. Now down to minus 129. So there is a little bit more risk there. Uh, and being that he is a little bit more expensive on both sides, he is my number two. An excellent GPP play tonight, uh, Connor Hallibuck, just because I think the shot volume that he's going to face is going to give you a ton of upside. If he can nab that win and only give up one to two goals here as well at home versus Montreal, he could be easily the top goalie of the night. Moving on to the center position. Uh, things are a little interesting here tonight. The first thing that stood out to me when looking at the DraftKings salary, Connor McDavid is cheaper than Mark Shifley, Nathan McKinnon, and my top center tonight, Jack Eichel. I'm still going towards Eichel um, for a few reasons, and it starts with the matchup against Ottawa. We have talked about Ottawa and how they have been better at home this season, but they have struggled here as of late, and I'm going to take advantage of that. Um, they've given up five, four, four, and six goals in their last four games. Two of those on the road. The last two have been at home. 5-4 um, win in overtime versus the Predators. And then they lost 5-4 in a shootout to the Flyers. So they're giving up a lot of goals recently, trending down at home. So I'm definitely looking at Jack Eichel. He extended his point streak to 18 games here. Um, the NHL doesn't really count that just because he missed that one game due to injury. He had that upper body injury. But he's had 32 points in those 18 games during that streak. Um, he's averaging just under four shots per game, so he's giving you everything we absolutely want. He's got a great matchup. The price is getting up there, but he's one of my top payups on this entire slate just because of the elite floor and ceiling that he provides in this excellent matchup. 
you're looking to go a little bit cheaper, Brock Nelson stands out to me. He's at home facing Columbus. Um, this game does have a little bit lower total. Columbus has been a little bit worse on the road. What I like about Nelson is that mid-5K range on DraftKings, that low 6K range on FanDuel. It helps you build a, a little bit more of a balanced lineup. I think the Islanders are going to put up two to three goals, uh, maybe even up there in four tonight. Brock Nelson, he's got eight points in his last 10, so he's been very consistent there. 29 shots. He gives you that, that shot volume as well. It's not the elite shot volume, but again, he's coming at a little bit cheaper of a price for us here tonight, um, down in that range, outside the top 15 in price on both sites. And he, he gets a ton of scoring chances for the Islanders as well. He's centering the second line, top power play unit. Um, the, the Corsi is down a little bit, so I'm expecting that shot volume to keep dropping off a little bit. He's probably in that 2.8 to 3 shots per game average, um, you know, over the long term once things uh, iron out here. But he's averaging 11 scoring chances per 60, and 6.3 of those uh, being in the high danger area. So that does give you some upside as well. So I do like him for cash as well as GPP. Then we got Jonathan Taves. I love Chicago tonight. I'm going to talk about them when I get to the winger position. But Taves is just a little bit too cheap for me here, especially on DraftKings, considering um, how good he has been lately. The the offense in general, I haven't talked a lot about Chicago this season. They're one of the worst teams in the league this year. The offense has been down. The defense has been down. They're outside. Um, the, you know, they're in the bottom half of offense and defense on the season. They have been trending lately, and a lot of that has to do with their superstars, starting with Jonathan, Don, Jonathan Taves. Sorry about that. Um, at center. He's got 13 points in his last 10 games. The shot volume is very inconsistent with him, um, you know, but we can deal with it with the price. He's got 24 shots in his last 10, but just being in that elite spot versus New Jersey tonight, who is second last in defense. Um, they no longer have Taylor Hall. They've just been really struggling and pretty much they've got the worst record in the league. Probably going to be going towards that first overall pick. Um, so definitely looking at Taves tonight, especially on DraftKings, if only 5,300. You can easily pair him with Eichel, or if you want to go that balanced route, pair Nelson and Taves together gives you uh, a nice balanced route in terms of cash game play on DraftKings especially. And that allows us to go to winger and get ta pair Taves with his power play partner. They're not on the same even strength lane line, but I like pairing a guy from the second line and the first line being that they, they skate together on the top power play unit. Um, when you have a team like Chicago who's in a good matchup against New Jersey, this gives us exposure to both top lines and the top power play unit, um, you know, in a game where we think Chicago can score three, four, even upwards of five, six goals um, in this matchup. makes a lot of sense to get exposure to multiple lines on a team um, without going full stack, especially in cash games. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket type thing. So, Kane and Taves are two of, are one of my favorite two-man stacks tonight. Kane has been absolutely incredible and a huge part why Chicago has turned things around here lately. He's got 13 points in his last 10. The shot volume is what stands out, 35 shots per game. So he's getting back to where he was, um, what we've expected from him the last couple of years, a high floor player as well as a ton of upside. He's always got that three, four point upside. And what really stands out, he's the 10th most expensive winger on DraftKings. So for that elite floor and, and elite ceiling um, for a player like him in this matchup, just like we talked about with Taves, that just seems too cheap for him, getting him as the 10th most expensive winger on DraftKings. Uh, he's right up there, a little more expensive on FanDuel. I like him in all formats on both sides, but definitely will have more exposure on DraftKings. And then if you're looking to the salary saver, kind of a mid-range play, I love Clayton Keller. Um he has benefit. He's been good all year. He's been solid all year in terms of shot volume. He's right up there in the 17, Corsi 4 per 60, which is shot attempts per 60 minutes. What I like even more is that Taylor Hall came in. Um, he's skating on the top line. So the top line right now, they got Christian Dvorak, Taylor Hall, Phil Kessel, and then the second line of Soderberg, Schmaltz, and Keller. Well, Keller kind of gets hidden on that second line. He's not going to get those top defensive matchups like he was getting earlier in the season. He has now got points in three straight. Um, three points last game, six shots on goal. So he's getting all that shot volume on the second line, which I really like. 12 points in his last 10 games, 44 shots on goal. I don't see that continuing, but he's in that three and a half shots per game kind of territory. Um, but I do like that uptick. And the price is just too cheap for how he's performing, especially on DraftKings at 4,900. I even really like the 5,900 on FanDuel as well. So he'll be one of my core plays. And normally, we wouldn't want to go against Nashville. They've you know, historically been a good defensive team over the last three, four years. Um, that hasn't been the case this season. They've struggled a lot, both at home and on the road. 
Um, so we can definitely target them. I have no fear with Clayton Keller. And uh, he does skate with Taylor Hall on the top power play, Dvorak as well, so he kind of jumps up with those guys. So if you want to pair them together, definitely think about Dvorak and Hall as uh, um as, as an option to go with a two-man stack or three-man stack if you're looking in GPPs, that would be one of my top uh, GPP stacks tonight. So moving on to defense, got a couple, uh, three players here that I am looking at, starting with Alex Pietrangelo if you're looking to spend some money on defense tonight. He's just been one of the most consistent D-men in the league over like his entire career. He's always been, I believe, in 10 seasons. Um, he will have 40-plus points in eight of those and 50-plus in, I think, three. Um, I have to double-check that. But he's just super consistent from year to year. And he doesn't come as one of the most expensive options because he doesn't give you that elite 60-70 point upside um, in terms of you know season long. But he's got seven points over his last 10 games, 35 shots. The blocks, he's not a big shot blocker. He does got five, so that's that's an average of... Uh, four shots blocks combined over the last 10, 10 games. But it's the shot volume that we're really looking for that gives him that high floor and a matchup against L.A., who's outside um, the top 20 in defense. Definitely lines up nice for Peter Angelo as my top defenseman tonight. Value plays, I like uh, Jacob Chitron here. Going back to Arizona, he has been solid this year as well. His price stays in that mid 4K range, low 4K range on FanDuel, so I like it a little bit better on FanDuel tonight. Not going to give you the lead upside, 15 points on the season, five in his last 10 games, but it's it's the floor that we're looking for here for the price. The points per dollar is there. 24 shots, 16 blocks in his last 10 games. He's averaging over three and a half combined shots blocks per game on the season. Nice points per dollar value there. If you want to go even cheaper into that sub 4K range on both sides, Ian Cole's going to stand out. Um, I would say only in cash games unless you need just someone under that 4K. You've, you've completed a lineup. You need someone in that sub 4K range to complete the lineup. I would probably consider him a punt for, for GPP as well. The problem is he just doesn't give you much upside. He does have 15 points on the season, but he's not an upside play. He's not out there on the power play, um, but it's the shot blocking and shot volume, especially lately. Like As you can see, um, he's right around 18 minutes per game on the season. Only four shots per 60, eight blocks per 60, which is nice. But over his last 10 games, he's got 18 shots and 29 blocks. He's averaging right over, um, I think it's like 11.3 DraftKings points per game. Um, I'll take that value under 4K, even though it is a fairly tough matchup on the road versus Vegas. We're not looking for upside from Cole. We're looking for that shot blocking and even a few shots in the game just to give him that high floor to tie our lineups together so we can go and get the Taves and Kane combination or uh, Keller and Hall or Jack Eichel, and uh, say you wanted to go with uh, Sam Reinhardt with him. If you want to pay up for some guys, this is where I like to go with one of my defensemen. So that covers everything. Like I said, later in the day, the top targets tab will be updated, top five at each position ranked. I will have all my GPP plays and the rest of my value plays and core plays highlighted on the sheet as well, so make sure to get over to Roto Pro's um, community chat and grab that. And if you're not a member, get over to the website, get your free trial, come in, check out what we're all about. Um, so today's schedule, obviously after this video, I've got uh, the plays going up for NHL. We've got the NBA plays going up along with the news feed. And then Monday Night Football tonight, like I mentioned, I'm going to have my plays and ranks up for that as well. And then Skeleton's a little bit closer to lock for all three sports. A lot going on at Royal Pros. Get over, come win with us. Have a great day, everyone. Go get some green screens.